All right, Brandon Island with the National Weather Service here to talk about, oh boy, what the rest of the year's uh, storm season may look like. May being the operative word, right, Brandon? Yes, and so we have been talking about a trend change that for the past couple of years we've seen a La Nina pattern across the Western Pacific. And so that favors much stronger easterly trade winds, fewer tropical cyclones across Micronesia, fewer tropical cyclones across the Marianas. And so this is just a review of 2022 the tropical cyclones across the region. And so here in this blue box is the general formation area of tropical cyclones in a La Nina area. Now, a lot of these storms that are farther up to the north and west, they actually originated as weak disturbances, but did not become a depression until they moved out of this area. And so you can see in for the Guam, for the Marianas, we had no direct impacts from any tropical cyclones. But that's going to change so as we we've seen already last uh, last month with moar and and so the other consideration is as we continue into an el nino shift this is a, a picture of what 2015 tropical cyclone season looked like good grief For the entire year of 2015 a strong el nino we saw so many tropical cyclones developing across micronesia farther off to the east across the uh, uh, Pompeii, Koshrai, even the Marshall Islands before they moved westward and west-northwest and then threatened the Marianas with some significant typhoons. Jason, if you look in really close, you can see there was a, quite a few tropical cyclones that went over to CNMI, not a single direct hit for Guam. I remember that year. It was we, like... we got grazed by Typhoon Dolphin in, in May, May of 2015, May 15th to be exact. It went just north of Anderson. So we did get some Category 1 impacts, but it was not uh, classified as a direct hit because the eye stayed offshore uh, right there in the Rota Channel. But this is what we could be looking uh, more like this year. We're not going to look exactly like this, but with the shift to an El Nino, uh, that is more favorable for uh, tropical cyclone development farther to the east, and it puts the Marianas at the significant increased risk of tropical cyclones and what we've seen the past several years. Okay, an important an important distinction to make too, Brandon, is that I mean these are projections right now. This still doesn't speak to the severity or the strength or intensity of, of any of these tropical cyclones or their closest point of approach to Guam and everything like that. R speculative at this point. Yeah, and so just just a reminder, this is this is the 2015 uh, all the tropical cyclones through the entire year 2015. Uh, not a forecast for 2023, but it just shows you that trend from 2022 La Nina, where everything was developing much farther to the south and west of the mm -hmm. Marianas, and then in the El Nino pattern, much farther to the east. So that increases our risk of tropical cyclones. Uh, this is not a forecast, but is more of an analog of what we could be seeing later in 2023. Okay, operative word may everybody air quotes and everything. So like, so don't freak out on the comments and everything like that. This is science at work right now. Uh, the experts here at the National Weather Service just doing what they do, letting you know that based on historical data and everything like that, this is a possible trend in a El Nino system as opposed to La Nina. That's right. And just a kind of a uh, outlook, uh, we will be having a regional climate conference uh, next week. Uh, where we will be rolling out the uh, the tropical cyclone outlook for 2023, uh, what we could expect for the remainder of the year. And so these are predictions that are based on this El Nino, La Nina trend. Uh, and so where we're going from the La Nina of the past three years and, and then into an El Nino, perhaps not as strong as 2015's El Nino, uh, but that is going to be the primary basis of our tropical cyclone outlook for mm -hmm. the remainder of 2023. So is that a fairly, like looking back in 2015, is that a fairly accurate assessment of what could be, or is, or is 2015 kind of like an outlier? And it was like, that was a really weird year, which is the exception, not the rule. Yes, there, there were a lot of tropical cyclones that is typical for El Nino years. 1997 uh, was, was similar to that, um, but- uh, That was a PACA year. <laughs> yes, PACA, exactly. Uh, I would definitely not hold it to every track is going to behave just the same, but we look at the trends and see where there's favorable genesis areas. And, and so most people on Guam and, and throughout the Marianas, if a tropical cyclone starts somewhere in Pompeii or Chuuk, there is a threat to the Marianas. Absolutely. And, and so the El Nino increases that threat. Yeah. But uh, you know what? We, we just uh, went through Typhoon Moar, continue to uh, pre uh, recover from it, uh, but always stay prepared. And that's why... That's why we at the National Weather Service always remind people, what do you need to do to be prepared? Uh, water, have those dry foods just stocked up in the back, just in case. So when there's a big rush for supplies, 
you don't have to be in that line. All right, and it's because of uh, you fine ladies and gentlemen here at the NWS that uh, we are informed and prepared. So we thank you, sir. Thank you.